Hello, 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 everyone. Can I please have a quick sound check? Let me know if you guys can hear me, if you can see the screen, you can see the slide, the powerhouse slide. Good evening, everybody. And thank you so much for allocating time to spend with me tonight. I promise you that I'm going to try to keep it within an hour. But if we start talking about charts, we may be going over. <laughs> and I have a surprise for you because this is not going to be your typical presentation. Uh, we are going to analyze a lot of charts and I will be sharing you the secrets behind finding the best trades to take uh, to trade actually in the morning and focusing on the power hour. How many of you guys in here are ready to become millionaires? Type a one in the room right now. How many of you guys are ready to become millionaires? Awesome. I love that. Love that. Love that. Love that. All right. Never in my wildest dreams have I ever thought that I would be making millions and millions of dollars in the market ever ever. I started trading with $50,000. That's it. That's all I had allocated for trading. And here I am today. I'm going to share with you guys my portfolio. And guess what? You don't have to have $50,000 because I'm going to be sharing with you some very important information. And guess what? We do have our own prop firm. Trade Out Loud has its own prop branch. So we can help you get there. Whether you want to trade with $50,000 or $500,000, we have that money for you. And yes, there's only an audition fee. We don't have any recurring payment, no subscriptions, nothing. Okay. All right. But more about that later. So uh, let's uh, begin everybody. But before we get started, I just want to mention that this whole event is being recorded. So don't worry about taking notes because you are going to have access to the recording. You can re-listen to it uh, if you wish, and uh, you can take notes then. I promise you guys, I will share all my secrets into having the best trading system. All right, I'm going to spill the beans tonight. So good evening everyone or good morning i see a lot of you guys said good morning good morning from australia all right before we get started tell me uh where you guys are from where are you guys from okay where are you guys from just type it in the chat just curious california arizona portland south carolina texas missouri california new york city uh, Florida. Hey, Randy. North Carolina, Orlando. Hey, Dennis. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Dallas. Love Dallas. All right. So guys, let's get started. Idaho. <laughs> awesome. All right. Originally from Florida. I am a Floridian, uh, but um, we do have a house in Michigan and we kind of like extended our stay. Oh, Chattanooga. Oh my gosh. I love Chattanooga. Love it. Love it. Love it. We stop in Chattanooga every single time when we drive from Michigan to Florida and from Florida back. Love it. Love it. Love it. And we spend a day or two days in Chattanooga. Absolutely adore Chattanooga. Tampa. Awesome, Ricky. That's amazing. All right. So guys, becoming a trading powerhouse. Nobody's born with the skill of trading the markets. Nobody. Nobody on this planet. It takes a lot of skill and it takes a lot of practice in order to become a powerhouse. And I can tell you right now that even being a powerhouse, you guys are still going to have losing trades. I still have losing trades. I will share with you my stats tonight. And I promise you that there's not a system in existence that will deliver a 100% win ratio. It is impossible in day trading, in investing, yes. Because if you have a lot of time horizon, if you're, you know, definitely have a lot of time horizon, and if you're looking at 30 years, 40 years, yes, 
the prices are going to go up, right? Because it is a proven system that there's no devaluation. So literally, there's no reason for the market to go down. And we had the discussion quite a while ago with a group of my traders. And I was telling them, guys, we don't have devaluation. And this discussion was last year and was this year. And I said, the market will still go up. And we have a very easy system. I'm going to share with you guys uh, some of the details in today, in, in, to, in tonight's presentation, because I want you guys to apply these strategies as soon as tomorrow, as soon as the market opens tomorrow. All right, so let's get started, everybody. All right, show me the money, show me the money. I wouldn't go to a presentation where there wouldn't be full 100% transparency. I would really want to know more about the person that is... Uh, uh, hosting the presentation and literally to put my money uh, where my mouth is. So show me the money. This is my November stat. And the reason why I chose November stat to show it to you guys first is because every day, every month is pretty much similar to what you guys see here. And you're going to see the whole year. And in fact, if you go to our um website and if you click either on services um in the future trading room and if you scroll all the way to the bottom of the page uh there is a button there that shows the performance and the performance is since 2017 that's right since 2017 since the inception of the futures trading room so as you guys can see in this slide not every day is a winning day. So you're going to have days where you're going to have losing trades. And that is part of the plan. Because once you have a trading plan, a well-balanced trading plan, and I want you guys, like, if you want to take a note here, fine. If not, you can re-listen to this and you can just enjoy the presentation tonight. And then uh, when you re-watch it, you can take some notes. Here's the thing, you need to have a trading plan and I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to have in that trading plan. In that trading plan, you need to know exactly what is the allocated amount that you need to um, spend in every single trade. So that is by looking at your account size. So right now or later or tomorrow morning, look at your account size, but I'm pretty sure everybody knows what they have in their trading account, right? So your account size is telling because you're going to select from that um, amount that you have there a certain percentage that you're going to be risking per trade. So that means that if you're a day trader, you have to, you have to allocate yourself between three and five trades a day. Now, the percentage can vary. Could be half a percent, could be 1%, could be as much as 2%. I don't recommend trading more than 2%, especially day trading. When you're swing trading, and I allocate for swing trading 2 to 3%, usually. So you can up your um, percentage because swing trading is different. But when I'm talking about stocks, not in futures. In futures, I usually keep it at 1%. So I just have a linear 1% when I'm trading futures. When I'm trading stocks, I use 2% or 3%. Well, more 3% than anything else, but that's how I position size. Sometimes you can't really position size to the T. And that's the thing with futures. So look at your account size, determine the percentage that you're going to be risking. And if it's going to be 1%, I personally risk 1%. I would not go up to 2%. I would not go down to half a percent, but there are occasions where I go down to half a percent. And next week is going to be one of those weeks where I may go down to half a percent. The reason for that is because next week we have the contract roll. So that means that the futures contracts are going to start rolling into the forward contract that is March, 2024. And we also have the quadruple witching expiration, which is on Friday. And that creates a lot of turbulence into the market. Usually prices are pinned at around whole numbers. I have already seen 
some activity into the market that is conducive into pinning already. So based upon the numbers that are we're going to get tomorrow morning, right, pre-market, we have some data that is coming out. We're going to talk about that as well. Based upon those numbers that we're going to get, we're going to see if that's capable of moving the market. So far, the market has not moved. We're going to talk about market. We're going to talk about charts. We're going to go through the S&P, NASDAQ, uh, the Dow, Russell, Gold, Oil. We're going to go all through all these charts, and we're going to show you the exact system that we apply to uh, that we apply to the markets in order to identify trades and how we can determine whether something is going to move or not. Okay, even in the next day, as soon as tonight. So I know from my technical analysis tonight the possibility and the ranges that the price may be trading into tomorrow. Okay, isn't that cool? All right, some really cool stuff, guys. So you're getting 2% risk per day or per trade. It's per trade, per trade. And I do recommend that is for swing trading. So if you're swing trading stocks, yes, use 2%. If you're not consistent and anybody in here that is not consistently profitable in day trading, whether you're day trading stocks or futures or Forex or options, please do not use more than 1% because the more you risk, the sooner you may reach a benchmark in your account that is very close to blowing up that account. Trust me, that is really serious stuff and you don't wanna blow your account, okay? So once you select the percentage that you desire, whether it's half a percent, there are individuals that are trading their IRAs and they have some really serious money, especially in their 60s or even into the 70s. We do have a lot of clients into our trading room and uh, into our courses. A lot of clients that want to generate or supplement income into their retirement. So they are trading their IRA accounts or Roth IRAs or, you know, any kind of long-term account or even retail. So for that reason, select an amount, even if, for example, maybe you have, I don't know, I'm just saying $5 million in your account. Please don't risk 1%. Risk something that is... Uh, manageable for you that makes sense to you you don't want to feel the heat I wouldn't be able to trade that like seriously I'm not a fund I'm not a hedge funds right so I don't even want to do that okay so basically stick to something that is very comfortable for you because if you lose on a trade that should not be devastating okay so if you lose in a trade that should not affect you psychologically and financially it's just a losing trade. It's part of the plan. And decide how many trades. I allocate five trades a day. That's what I allocate. Because you guys are going to see here that I have five trades here, two trades here, one trade here, three trades here. I'm not taking a standard of five trades every single day. I try to find an opportunity to get in. For example, today I only had one trade, right? So I want to find an opportunity to get in and be done, okay? Typically, you want that one nice, juicy trade. I'm going to share with you what I trade and what I look for in order to have a velocity move. So that means you're eyeing and you're waiting and you have the patience to wait for that setup that you recognize. And then you go after it, you put in your limit order, and the market takes you in. So from that point on, I'm expecting the market to go up. I'm not looking at ticks. I'm not interested in making three ticks or five ticks or eight ticks or two points or five points. When I'm shooting for a trade, I'm shooting, for example, if I'm trading um, the S&P, I'm looking for eight points, 10 points, 15 points. If I'm trading NASDAQ, I'm looking for 30 points, 50 points, 100 points. If I'm trading the Dow, I'm looking for 80 points, 100 points, 150 points. So if I'm trading Russell, I'm looking for five points or 10 points or 15 points or even more. So I am looking for that velocity move. Why? There's a reason for that. I don't want to waste my money going in and out, in and out, because the futures market, you still have commissions, right? And you still have fees. And I don't want to kill my account with fees and commissions. These are my trades, for example. 
Okay, so this is how you need to, to budget. So for example, if you have a day that is a trending day and you have pullbacks and buys and pullbacks and buys and it's trending, you have a trending market, buy every pullback that you have in the market. So you can go ahead and you can actually get more risk into the market. But here's the thing. I trade differently if I start the day with a losing trade. So for example, if I have my first trade and if I lose, it means that I'm losing my 1%, right? We're going to get to that special position sizing um, uh, position sizing strategy towards the end of the presentation when I'm going to share with you some other elements of the trade. But position sizing is essential because you want to make sure that when you lose on a trade, you do not lose more than 1%. All right? Does that make sense and the number of contracts that you're going to take for trade are always going to vary they're always going to vary they're going to go up and down up and down for example today right today i had a trade in nasdaq 15,935 is where we entered we're going to do a case study on that one as well and my exit was 15,990. I was hoping that it would break that freaking 16,000 and change, but it didn't. And I finally put my trail here and we finally made an R into the trade. I mean, it's not a fantastic trade. It's just one R, but hey, it's better than a loss. And other than that, in this kind of market environment, if you capture an R in the trade, that's phenomenal. For those of you that do not know what an R is, so that is the R, letter R. R represents risk, okay? It's the risk. The risk is the difference between the entry and the stop. And that is going to provide you with a number. For example, you, the difference between the entry and the stop can be 15 points, 30 points, 50 points, 70 points. The risk is always going to vary. You cannot have the same risk on every single trade for the difference between the entry and the stop. But you're going to have like the same percentage risk on all the trades. So for example, if I risk 1%, if I have a 30 point stop in NASDAQ, it's gonna be the same as if I have like 120 point stop in NASDAQ. Because I'm gonna position size, so I'm gonna take uh, I'm gonna take as many contracts that I can fit into that uh, into that amount into that one percent. More about that towards the end of the presentation. All right, so these are my trades. You can see here that yes, I have wins, I have losses. I so look, trading is being in the market every single day, and you know, literally working your butt off. Okay. These are my results. They're a little bit higher because I took this snapshot last week. And since last week, we had more winning trades. We actually closed the trade in gold. You could see it right here. I had a four contracts in gold and that yield a really phenomenal uh, uh, profit. We also have a limit order again in gold that I'm going to share with you tonight. And I have a buy limit order at 2060. So if the price is going to hit tonight, 2060 or tomorrow, 2060, I'm going to be in swing long. Okay. Still my percentage is 1%. All right, so these are the returns for this month. This is my winner ratio so far within seven days, uh, basically uh, not even seven days, like uh, four days this week, plus five days, okay? Just five days, so it's very early to uh, determine uh, what the percentage is going to be towards the end of the uh, month. Uh, so these are my accumulated returns. The, these amounts right here do not represent my account. So my account is separate than what you see. I trade a $500,000 account and these are my accumulated returns. These are my commissions. Okay. So you can see why I don't like to go in and out 50 times. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Would you rather go in and out of trades five to six times in a day or would you rather take one to two trades that would be, that would deliver? Okay, so what it would be one to two trades. I got it exactly.
because exactly so that's the goal the goal is not to over trade the goal is to try to identify are there going to be days with five trades you bet right because you're going to go after your money and if you have five losing trades guys if you have five losing trades in a row quit okay done be done tomorrow's a different day that's what i do so that's why i allocate myself five trades per day but i don't take five trades in a day i may take one or two or five depending okay so for those of you that don't know me guys my name is Anka Metcalf, CEO and founder of tradeoutloud.com i'm an independent trader i've been trading for over 23 years uh, prior to becoming a professional independent trader, meaning trading from home is just a really fancy way of saying that I'm a professional independent trader. I trade from home, just like you guys, okay? Like many of you guys. Uh, I come with 10 plus years in investment banking. I work uh, I worked for investment company, hedge funds, et cetera. And I had a burning desire to trade on my own and make it on my own because I saw the fees, the commissions and everything that these managers, these uh, hedge fund managers, portfolio managers charge and I'm like, I want to do everything on my own, okay? Uh, so I run a swing trading service for stocks and ETFs since 2010. And this is when Trade Out Loud was actually born in 2010. And this is our, this was our first program along with uh, uh, swing trading and investing education course. Uh, later on, uh, because uh, my planner and my accountant uh, said that, hey, you know what? You're paying too many taxes and you have to do something about it. Plus, I think that uh, the fact that uh, the reporting for day trading was kind of tedious for them. And I was trading a lot. I was trading literally all day long. It's not like I was, I'm trading futures right now. I was trading from, I, I would take probably 12, 12 trades in a day. So I'm not kidding you guys. And that was stock trading. So yeah, I had a lot of commissions then. And um, by the way, when I started trading, I would pay $600. It was, it was $600 for real tech for the data fees and all that stuff. And I was in a trading room that I was paying $500. So, um, you know, by the time I even put a trade, I was in the hole in my account, $1,100. <laughs> so that made me like really focus and really work my butt off, you know, just to make money. And I think that helped in the end, because if I throw you guys in a pool and say, hey, uh, this month I'm taking $2,000 out of your account, you're going to fight fight like hell to take to make that money back, right? All right, so maybe that was a good thing uh, that happened. But I do appreciate the fact that right now we don't have as much commission and we don't have to pay data fees uh, for our trading. Uh, so in 2000, uh, in 2015, uh, that is when I made the full switch to day trading futures. Uh, I try to, uh, I, I wasn't a fan at beginning. I wasn't a fan. Um, I really didn't know a lot about the futures market. All I knew about the futures market is that it trades about 24 hours and it trades in contracts and not shares. And uh, they expire, uh, for example, indices uh, at the end of each quarter. That's pretty much what I knew. But there is a lot more involved in it. And uh, once I got the taste of it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not turning back. I was already doing the pre-work and I was already looking at the overnight markets. I was already doing analysis on the Qs, the Spice, the Diamonds because I was a, a stock trader. And I was already doing all this analysis uh, pre-market before I was scanning for a stock that I would get in. So I would do my hot list in order to find trades that I would trade that day. And I had a gap list, I had trend continuation, I had setups, I had bases, I had all these strategies that were lined up. So it was a lot more sophisticated than what I do right now. And a lot more prep work on my side. So when I started trading futures, like I said, I wasn't very excited that I was giving up, you know, looking at stocks every single moment. Uh, but then I realized that, hey, you know what, I can swing trade and I can still invest in stocks, but I can day trade futures because it's so much better for my account and for my money. So like I said, it was it's like tra taking trades in queues and spies. It's like trading, uh, you know, um, SPX and NASDAQ. So it's the same thing. Uh, the chart is the chart. And I have uh, some examples for you guys here. Uh so bottom line is that when you 
when I when, when I decided to become a day trader, it was the commute. The commute was literally like killing me. I had to travel about three hours a day. And it was an hour and a half to go to work, an hour and a half to go back. Long, long hours. Uh, because uh, I was um, uh, I was uh, working uh, in a firm. It was a hedge fund, an investment firm. And uh, we were a boutique firm that were servicing only really high net worth clients, but I mean, really high net worth clients. And um, we had to do, obviously they need to be pampered, right? So guess what? We had to go and we had to, you know, do all these, uh, this, have all these meetings and discussions with them and, you know, talk about the market context and do this and that and prepare presentations and have meetings. And it was just really, and this was outside of our normal office hours. Okay. It was literally outside of our office hours. So it would be either early, very early in the morning. We had some professionals that were uh, physicians and it was before they started the round. So we would do meetings at five o'clock in the morning, especially for uh, IRAs and uh, um, um, 401ks and especially 401ks because we were managing 401ks as well. So anyways, it was a hassle. It was really long hours. Plus the commuter was driving me crazy. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I could trade for myself, you know? So I can definitely, you know, uh, and I was looking at the market. I was, uh, I was already swing trading and I already had investments and I'm like, I could do this. So, um, bottom line is that when you're a day trader, you're your own boss. You don't need to commute. You could care less. If you want to drive, you drive. If you don't want to drive, you don't drive. Um, you get special tax advantages from the IRS if you're a registered trader um, or investor. Um, you don't need to focus on, oh my gosh, where am I going to get my clients? You know, that's another thing, you know, when you're targeting, for example, when I was working on the investment firm, uh, we were always targeting really high net worth clients and we we're trying to persuade them. You don't have to persuade anybody. You don't have to talk. So if you're not a people person, no problem, okay? Because this is the best job for you. You don't need to be a people person. Uh, you don't need any clients. You don't have to do any cold calls. You don't have to email anybody. It's just you and your computer. That's so cool about it. Because, and here's the thing, you have the liberty and say, hey, I don't want to trade today. Uh, or, you know, I don't feel like trading today. You don't have to trade every day. And in fact, I don't recommend trading every day, especially if you have like, uh, you know, an issue or if you're sick or anything like that. And if you don't feel like trading, don't trade. Okay. So you're talking to a person. I had COVID last year in January and I had one of those like long lingering COVID things uh, like I think it lasted like three months and I'm not kidding you. I was like, my brain was in fog. Like seriously, the one thing that kept me Zen and in the zone was trading. I never took a day off trading. So I got sick on January 1st of last year and believe it or not, the market opened, I think it was January 2nd and I was running the trading room. I had a fever, I was, you know, coughing a little bit, you know, all the flu symptoms, but no, I was trading. And this helped me so much, you know, cross that really, I would say kind of like nasty period, okay? But anyways, I can teach you guys how to do it. And in fact, in tonight's presentation, I'm going to show you how we do things here. Um, when I first started trading, I went to a couple of seminars in New York and there were some uh, guys in New York that um, basically I ended up taking some courses from them. They closed shops, so they're not around anymore. There were two companies that I uh, invested uh, my uh, money to, uh, to them. So they teach me how to trade and they did a really good job. Uh, and, uh, basically this was one of the things that attracted me to one of them. Uh, one of them said, you can turn your computer into your personal ATN. And I'm here to repeat the same thing that this guy 
you know, uh, told me like probably 23 years ago. So yes, your computer is your personal ATM because with day trading, you can get money every day out of the market on an average. I'm not talking about the fact that, oh my gosh, I'm going to pull money every single day consecutively. No, it's impossible to do that. I have had winning streaks where I have 100% win ratio on uh, the month. And I had a month with 50%, never less than 50%, never less than 50%. I had 60%, I had 80%. Uh, but just so you guys know, do you guys know that you could be like a hot mess and not have a winning strategy, but kind of like nail it here and there? So even if you're at the beginner stage and if you apply the three to one risk to reward ratio, okay, if you apply the proper risk to reward ratio, two to one or three to one and position size, because this is the holy grail of trading position sizing. If you don't position size, guys, oh my gosh, it's not going to work. The math is not going to work. And uh, basically, basically, you can have a win ratio of 35 to 40%, meaning you lose more than 60 to 65% on a day, uh, on, on an average per month, let's say, and you can still grow your account. Do you guys realize that, right? So this is by the power of position sizing. So this is the perfect year to learn right now at the end of 2023. Start your 2024 adventure towards financial freedom. Trade your way to financial freedom in 2024. It's the perfect time to learn how it's done. I'm going to share some really awesome stuff with you guys tonight. What is the market? The market is a constant transfer of wealth between the novice trader and the astute trader, the educated trader. I mean, what makes us think that one day we just decide to get into the market without proper trading or education? When you're competing with the best algorithms, you're competing with the best traders on Wall Street. Newsflash, markets will remain volatile through 2024. They will be even more volatile than 2023. We're stepping into an election year. Now in January, I typically uh, talk to my clients and talked with my traders, even in the trading room and with my students, we have a prep, let's say session for the year. And we discuss about each year. Election years are typically bullish, right? Election years are typically bullish. At the beginning of 2023 of this year, I did a forecast and I shared with my traders that the S&P will go to 4,600. Do you think that I have a crystal ball? No, no, I don't. But technically looking at charts, we established through projections that the S&P will reach 4,600 and it's December and we're at 4,600, okay? All right, now, Russia, Ukraine, Saga is gonna continue. Israel, Hamas conflict will continue. FOMC will continue to raise or stall rates. No idea. I think that the meeting, the FOMC meeting that we're gonna be having um, in December right now is gonna be really telling. I don't know if it's not next week or the following, I, I forgot to look, but it will be telling. Inflation still super high. So this is another reason why you want to work towards generating income, work towards supplementing your income. Day trading is the way to do it. Whether you're trading stocks, day trading stocks, I don't care what you're trading, but you need to do something in order to create that cash flow. Massive layoffs continue. I mean, there is not a week in which you don't hear about a company that is laying off people. Energy crisis. Have you guys look at oil? By the way, oil gapped up <laughs> today, <laughs> tonight. 
gapped up and open. It gapped up a little bit, right? Not very common, but it gapped up a little bit. Okay. Uh, then we have recession. I mean, are we going to have a recession or is it going to be a soft landing? All right. Okay. Yellen was saying that, yeah, it's, it is a soft landing. And she's, she has clues, you know, that she's looking at and she's saying, yeah, yeah, it's already, I mean, we're already landing. <laughs> okay. All right. This is my portfolio. And I, um, I wanted to share with you this because this is where my year starts at zero. Okay. This is where my year starts at zero. So I was telling you guys that the amount that I was sharing, the $1.2 million that I made this year with a $500,000 account, now you can calculate it for yourself. You could have a $50,000 account and you could have over $100,000, $120,000 right now. All right. So I just wanted to show you, this is where I started. First day was January 4th. And this is as we're heading towards the end of the year. Okay. You can see the, the progression higher. Okay, you can see the progression, it's going higher. And you can see that it had, you know, pretty much a slow start, like steady, but really slow start into the first quarter. And then bam, we hit it really hard, right? Because the opportunities were there. All right, and by the way, this, what you're seeing here is not by compounding, not by compounding. I don't compound, I don't. I take my money out, my profits. I take my profits out at the end of each month. Why? Because I need to pay my bills, okay? I need to pay my bills. I need to, part of the money, I put into my investing account. So if you guys are interested in investing, we're going to have a course that is going to come out pretty pretty soon. I was hoping to be uh, to have it out by December, but it's not. I was very busy with trading and, uh, you know, teaching our uh, courses uh, that I did really, you know, put the final touches on the investing course, but that's going to be an amazing course. If you don't have the time, you could start even with $50 and that is with compounding. Okay. So this presentation is for you guys. If you want to trade in sync with the power institutional money movers. If you are ready to eliminate frustration in trading, if you want to trade with clarity and stress-free, I trade every single day. In fact, in this room right now, tonight, we have some traders that are students of mine that are in the trading room. And if you have any questions for them, you feel free to ask them. We are 100% um, transparent. And I, they can tell you, I'm never stressed in the room. I know exactly where my entry is. I stock, I stay quiet until the opportunity is there. I analyze the market, the market contest. So I'm constantly monitoring the markets, but I trade stress-free. I have my limit order in and that's it. And the rest, I trail. So who's ready to become consistent and eliminate the noise? Because this is the biggest dream. I remember that it took me about... Uh, about a year and a half to become consistent, a consistent trader. And like I said, I did not even open my retail trading account until I had two trading courses. And man, they were expensive. Like, woo. you can imagine if I was in a trading room and I was paying, uh, I, I was like $500 or $600 per month trading room, like 20, 20 to 23 years ago. Like, can you imagine like that trading room now, how much it would be. But yeah, it was fully worth it. Uh, I had the privilege to trade with some institutional traders. So it, it was phenomenal. I mean, the experience was phenomenal. And uh, in fact, one of the um, uh, traders in there just, uh, you know, I, I was, uh, I, I was actually, what, there were one or two uh, women into the program and uh, one of the guys said that, you know, the style that I trade and the questions that I was asking, I was like, I was reminding him of his prior mentor. So that was very neat. Um, so anyways, um, I was, um, you know, one of the first female traders to really succeed from um, from their uh, from their uh, coaching and their programs. So here's the thing, guys. It takes the doctor seven plus years to become a doctor, right? L lawyers, 
four years plus law school plus bar exam pilots you three years plus training time license engineer four years plus training p exam but no if you want to be a trader you just open an account you just hit the market <laughs> take some advice from tiktok i mean i don't know is it me or just because of the nature of you know my um you know, my business because I'm I'm trading. But when I go, for example, on Instagram or on Facebook, all I see is trading ads. <laughs> like, like, oh my gosh. And I see these kids like, oh my gosh, let me show you how you can make like $5 million and uh, they're with Lamborghinis. And it was like, I, I, okay, newsflash, I don't have a Lamborghini, okay? And I don't have a mansion by the ocean, Okay, that's another thing. I trade for a living. I pretty much work my butt off, you know, to trade. I do a really good job, but no, trading is not about having Lamborghinis. Oh, I don't know. Maybe you can start. <laughs> yeah, lots of BS out there. Like when I say, and one of the things that bug me so much is uh, those pictures. And when you see these kids like going on the beach with their phone and trading off an tablet or trading off a phone yeah it's fine if you're investing you're checking your investments to see where they're at you're but when you're day trading are oh, you gotta be kidding me like i need my monitors because i need to see what's happening and you're gonna see what uh, what i look at in a few moments right so most important parts of trading are really rarely discussed yeah i know there's there are a lot of scams out there a lot of scams because when I look at the following, I'm like, they have like two to three following, uh, the two to three thousand following them. And I, I mean, there's so many, there's so many people that believe in this, you know, and that's so sad because they're the ones that are, you know, um, giving money to these people and they're not learning anything. I mean, I was fortunate because back in the day, when you were attending a trading course, it was a freaking trading course. You know, I mean, there were some that were, uh, that sucked. There were some that were awesome. Okay. But all in all, you will, you would still be learning something even from the ones that sucked. Okay. All right. So you need to have confidence, conviction, everything in here, confidence, conviction, patience comes from education. You have to know what you're doing. Then you have to have the mental toughness. Why? Because sometimes, you know, when you have a loss, even if it's that 1% that we talked about, so it, it's not pleasant, but you have to push through that. Uh, the was, one thing that I truly hate is, for example, you know, in the morning, I look at a trade, I take the trade and I'm stopped out. Oh, I hate it. The first trade a loss, then I have to work my way out. Okay. And then I have to look and see if there's the environment to go back after my money. And I'm really praying that um, um, the environment is right and that I could, you know, take another trade because sometimes the environment is sucks and you can't take another trade. And you might as well say, you know what? I don't see, I don't see it happening. And I'm just going to go home. I'm just going to take my toys and that's it. And that's it. And uh, everything that we discuss here, discipline, education, preparation, these are 90% of the battle, right? 90% of the battle. How many times, you know, you hear someone say, hey, I don't have patience to wait for the trade. I just jump in. Well, if you have the proper trading education, you don't jump in because you know that you have to see certain setups. So what do you need to have in order to become a powerhouse? You need to have that burning desire and you need to you need to really want to become a day trader really badly. And it's not just for the money, but you have to love what you're doing because I love money, for example. I've always wanted and I was, you know, kind of like I was lucky to have jobs where I was really well paid, but I really loved money and it's in my, and don't laugh, astro chart, right? So I have, I have Mercury into my money house. So it's money in, money out, money in, money out, money in, money out. So I, I, I love, so by, by the nature of my sign, you know, I have that money connection. You need to have focus. Okay. So when I trade, my door is closed. And there's nobody bothering me. 
Uh, I'm not here for anybody because this is my time. This is where I am working, okay? Even though we're having a lot of fun and you're not working that hard because basically what you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis is match with what you know in your brain to the chart that you see. And if you have a pattern that you learned and you see it in the market, you take the trade. It's that easy. It's not hard. What do I trade? We're getting towards charting. Uh, I trade the indices. Uh, I take, I look at oil and gold mainly for swing trading purposes. Okay. And you can still trade the rest of the panel here, like grades, currencies, what have you, whatever bonds. I'm not very excited about those because I still swing trade stops and I do a lot of swing trading and stops. So trading is basically a rule-based system. It's rule number one. What is the strategy that are you using? What is the number two? What is the, uh, the number of trades that I'm allowing myself to trade a day? What kind of management system am I applying, right? Um, money management, that is. What is my, um, you know, objective out of this trade and all that stuff. So this is basically, you know, the rule. You see the trade and matches to what you have in your head, what you have learned, you take the trade. Other than that, I don't take the trade. It could kill me. You can kill me. I'm not taking the trade. Uh, and it's all about finding higher trades. And that's why we're here tonight. Because you need to wait for a setup. And I'm going to give you some ideas for, uh, for some overnight trades as well. And mindset, guys. Mindset is very important. Being the right mindset. Okay. Here's, uh, here's what I love about futures trading. I'm going to start with the last thing. It's a 24-hour market. So we're here. It's 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern where I'm at. And... If I want to look at the market right now and say, hey, you know what? I didn't have time today or I didn't take a trade today or um, maybe there is another opportunity for the overnight. I can look at the market right now, okay? And I can see if I can try to identify a trade where I can get in. And this type of trade would be an AON. AON is all or nothing. I'm going to put it right here in the chat box. It's AON. This is all or nothing. So what does this mean? Basically, you're putting the order in, you're placing your stop, you know where your target is, so you're putting your profit target there. You can split your profit target into two targets if you wish, and you go to bed, okay? That's it. In the morning, you're either up or down. There's a catch. I'm not risking 1%. I'm risking half a percent for my overnight trades because they're not managed. It's sort of like having your own algorithm. It kills me inside to see traders that are falling for the algorithmic scam. Seriously, there is, guys, there's not one algo in existence, especially a retail algo. All these computer guys that are selling algorithms, that are selling signals, that are selling indicators, my goodness, guys, don't fall for that. I fell for that a long time ago. And I spun my wheels for about three months until I brushed it off, lost a bunch of money. And I went, I'm got, I went like, oh my gosh, I got to go back to my trading plan. It's, this is not working. There's no easy way out. You have to learn how to trade. Seriously. Here's the thing. With futures, you only have four charts, guys. That's it. Or if you want to, look at gold and oil just to have an idea of how the market is moving that's six charts that's it you don't need a scanner i use three scanners because i swing trade a lot <laughs> hey jeff all right so i do swing trade a lot and i swing trade a lot that's why i have a scanner but you don't have to have a scanner you don't need a scanner because you're watching four charts that's it okay so here's the other thing Futures, like I said, you can open an account with $5,000. I don't recommend $5,000. Just make sure you have seven or 10. Or if you don't have money and say, you know what? I don't want to risk my own money. You could go to a prop account. Okay. Prop, there are so many prop accounts out there. In fact, today in the trading room, we have uh, we have our own prop, 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 for, prop uh, a branch. And one of our traders made it live 
Oh my gosh. And he was shocked that once he made it live, he automatically received the notification. It would technically, it takes like about, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes or less. But in his case, it was immediately, it was like 30 seconds and he was shifted into the live account. Okay. So we have a lot of traders that are making a lot of money. Newsflash, the traders that are making a whole bunch of money and getting huge payoffs are stock swing traders, not kidding, and swing traders, okay? Not the, not the futures. In futures, you really have to know what you're doing because they're super fast. All right, if you wanna become a day trader and you definitely have to have more than $25,000 because of the day trading pattern rule, 30,000 or more, because if you open an account with 25,000 and if you lose a dollar, your day trading status is out the door. You could only swing trade or invest in that account, period. That's it, okay? So one of the major things for the prop branch that we run is that we allow traders via our broker to literally trade stocks without having a series, what is it, series 56 or something like that, without having series 56, which is a super hard exam, only 10% pass that exam. And who has time to do that? Who has time to learn for that exam? And you have to know options. You got to know the futures. You got to know stocks. You got to know a lot of stuff. Because the questionnaire, I have the questionnaire. Somebody send it to me and I'm like, oh my God, this is really hard work. Trading is easy. <laughs> that is really hard. So here's the advantage between trading futures and trading stocks, okay? So we're gonna do it side by side. And um, for example, let's say you wanna trade the Qs. Look, you need to be about $14,000 to buy 100 shares. And if the price goes up 50 cents, you make 50 bucks, perfect. If you're a futures trader, and if you wanna trade, let's say NASDAQ futures, which is, right? Apples to apples, Q's and NASDAQ, right? Let's say the price is at 15,100, right? You need about seven, approximately $17,000 to buy a contract, okay? And if the price goes up 50 points, then you make $1,000 because each point is 20 bucks. Let me show you this example. We had a coaching session with some, um, with some uh, traders uh, this uh, winter, last winter, and we did an example and basically we met, uh, we met at, uh, I think it was like, it was a four hour coaching and we met at 12 o'clock and uh, we um, wrapped it up at four and we identify a trading opportunity here at 1 PM. I don't like to trade the doldrums because they're super shaky, but starting with one o'clock, you can start looking at the market. Okay. Now you can write these this down or you could just take a pen and pencil the next time when you listen, pause this and grab a pen and pencil. And when you're viewing the recording, because this is very important, don't trade the doldrums. Or if you are still in a trade from this morning, from the morning, and if you're trading through the doldrums, shift to a higher time frame. So for example, if you took the trade on a five minute or on a two minute, go to a 15 minute and adjust your stops based upon the 15 minute price port resistance, okay? Depending on whether you're long or short. So for example, if you're long, put your stops anywhere below the doldrum lows, okay? Because typically the volume is really thin as you're going into lunch algorithms are pausing. There are a lot of traders that are taking the, their lunch breaks. They're on and off and volume becomes thinner. And when you're seeing wicks pop up, like wicks here, like wicks, wick, wick, you can see this doji, wicks, wicks to the upside. These are topping signs right here when you're getting the uh, wicks to the upside, bottoming signs, right? So when you're seeing a wig, what is a wig? This candle at some point in time was all red and buyers came in. So buyers lifted the price over here and that is a bottoming sign. And you can see here that we had another chop because it was definitely within the doldrums. 
And then when the price came in, retested the prior low, zipped back up, right? Because the price remembered that there was a prior visit there and it lifted the price. But at one point, this candle was all red, all red. So it opened, right? It opened. Remember, red candles open at the top. It shifted higher. So at one point, it was a little bit of green here. Then it dried out. So the bear step in, stepped in. And then guess what? They pushed it all the way to the bottom. But towards the end of the trading sequence, this is a five-minute chart. The, the bulls stepped in and literally eliminated all the bears and they created this little tiny body over here. So these were all the bears. So that shows you a lot of instability, a lot of indecision in price. So when you're seeing this kind of action in price, you're thinking at the trading psychology behind the candlestick. You're thinking at the meaning. Why is the candle having these wicks to the upside? To, and to the downside. Does this make sense, guys? Okay. So what happened here is that the bears are squished into this little baby candle right here, right? Right in the meat of the candle. And you're having volatility to the upside, volatility to the downside. This means indecision. So typically after you see a candlestick like this, you're going to go bullish above, bearish below. No thinking. Does that make sense, guys? Dojis are indecision candles. When they break above, they're bullish. When you the price breaks below, they're bearish. Take a look at this doji here. Does that make sense? Look at the resistance that we have from a prior candle. This is an inside candle. This is so powerful. Look at the extension that it has, not only from the 20 SMA, which is blue, but from the 10 EMA here, that is a pink-ish. So when you're seeing this inside doji candle right here, you go like, it's going to be bullish above this high, right? And it's going to be bearish below this low. The bullish above this high hasn't happened because and you're seeing the action here so you have bears that are pushing the price down does that make sense bears pushing the price down indecision sell pull back 20 sma think bullish it literally filled the void right so you guys see here there's this void there's a, a there it's not called it's not a gap yeah simon it's not a gap it's a void. It's a tradable void from where the price is at to the uh, moving average. Remember, I use the 10 exponential moving average. I use the 20. I use the 50 as well. Uh, I'm going to show you in some uh, in, uh, in in some charts tonight. But basically, the price cannot stay extended for a long period of time from the 10 EMA or the 20 SMA. These are the power uh, power trending uh, moving averages, especially the 10 EMA is the power trend, 20 is the trend. So you can see here what happened. It, this is this was our entry and it got into a power trend. Look at the price action here, how beautiful it is, right? Look at the price action, how beautiful it is. Anyways, bottom line, this is the cues. We talked a little bit about candlesticks. I wanted to kind of like give you a flavor of how you need to analyze uh, the candlesticks and the formations. So this is chart of the cues. You need about $15,000 here in buying power to buy 100 shares. And that generated $300. Perfect, right? It was worth it. On the other hand, NASDAQ, you can see that you need $17,000 in buying power. That gets you a contract. And right here, you have the same setup. This generated $2,400, a little bit over $2,400. So same pattern. So I'm going to ask you right now, if you learn a winning pattern, would you rather take the cues or trade Apple? I mean, trust me, I have nothing against trading Apple because I trade Apple very often <laughs> because I, I'm a really addicted uh, stock trader. OK, but would you rather spend the time like, let's say, from one o'clock till four o'clock and make three hundred dollars? Or would you rather trade Nasdaq and within the same move, same chart, same pattern, same analysis, 
and make $2,400. And again, take a look at this. Okay, take a look at this. All right. Okay. <laughs> exactly, Kay. Exactly. All right. So this is mini NASDAQ. You want to trade your own account. Let's say you have $7,000 in your account. This only requires $1,700 in buying power. $1,738. Okay. That's it. And you take it with one contract. Here's the entry. Same chart, guys. Same chart. Okay. <laughs> Damn. All right. So this is, guys, this is $246 on an investment of $1,738. I mean, are you kidding me? This is the buying power in effect. You take one contract, micro $246. And by the way, with this volatility, NASDAQ futures is awesome. Micro, now, and by the way, if those of you guys that don't know what a micro is, micro NASDAQ, this is 10th of the size of the full size contract. Okay, so this is spice. These are the spice. Twenty thousand dollars in buy power. Same pattern. <laughs> it was a nice synchronized synchronized move into the market. Two hundred two hundred sixty two dollars. S and P. This is the futures full size contract. Same pattern on the day delivered. Th uh, Three thousand six hundred seventy eight. The buy power divide this by four. So it'll be a little over $10,000, actually like $1,100 because I was already in the trade. So I, I didn't want to exit the trade just because I wanted to share this example. And then we have micros, ES, which is 10th of the size of the full size contract, micros. You see the buying power right here, $1,100. This generated one uh generated $127. I don't know about you guys, but this is more than 10%, right? More than 10% on a trade. By the way, do you guys know how much hedge funds uh are uh targeting for the year? Because the rest is fees and commissions. <laughs> yeah, whether the market goes up or down or whether you're losing or making money, they don't care. They're getting their commissions. Uh, they're targeting 6%, 6 to 8%. Yep, that's right. They don't do a lot of work. They don't. Most of the work is basically not analytical, but it's like hunting for clients. The more clients, the more commissions, okay? They don't do as thorough of a job that we do. Everybody that is in here right now is going to be better than any hedge fund manager out there because you guys are putting the effort to learn how it's done. Okay, one of the reasons why I love trading the futures market and especially into an election year, uh, I trade election nights. <laughs> it's so much fun. And we have the trading room open for election nights and the volatility is insane. Uh, but I show my traders how I trade. And I think that 2024 is going to be no different. We're probably going to do the same thing if I don't have anything else better to do. <laughs> it's fun. Like, I, I can't. I can't stay away from the market. So if you're just market is close to, um, is open close, it's open about 24 hours a day, six days a week. And when things happen, they don't happen for, uh, they don't wait for the market to open. So if you want to take advantage of some really cool moves into the market, you just, you you could actually take advantage of them. You don't have to wait for the stock market to open. All right, now we're getting a little bit uh, deeper into um, time frames, successful patterns. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at patterns next. So um, time frames. It's very important the way you approach the market. Okay, because time frames are are time frames are something that a lot of traders. Um, think that you could literally sleep in and live, use that zip code forever. Okay, let's say, you know, living on the two minute or living on the one minute. Here's what I do. I typically monitor the five minute chart, but at the open between 9.30 and 10 o'clock, I look at the one minute and the two minute. And I correlate my one and two minute to the five minute, okay? And then after... 
10 o'clock. I literally don't look for setups on the one minute and two minute. So I'm going to repeat this again. From the moment the market opens, I look at the one minute and two minute for setups. That means I'm looking for a particular pattern. I'm looking for entries. I'm looking for my stops and I'm looking for targets on the one minute and two minute. After 10 o'clock, I ditch the one minute and two minute. I keep them on my chart. I'm going to share the charts in just a second. I keep them on my charts, but I don't focus on entries. My entries are going to be focused on the five minute because this is the most accurate time frame. If you want a stress-free environment and if you want to trade stress-free, you want to focus on a time frame that is going to provide you with less stopouts. You can imagine that if you're focusing on the one minute and the two minute chart, you're going to stop out quite often if you're trading after 10 o'clock because there's a lot of noise there. There's a lot of accumulated residue in the market. And that's the best way to do it. Now, notice this. I was telling you guys earlier that from 1130 to two o'clock, I like to focus on the 15 minute. This is the doldrum period. You don't want to mess around with this. If you didn't take any trades in the morning, don't trade the doldrums, okay? Don't trade the doldrums. They're thin, they're sloppy, okay? But if you are in a trade, let's say you took a trade at 945 and darn, the market is not moving and you're still in that trade. You're not up, you're not down, you're flat. That's not a reason to close the trade. The trade is a trade. Uh, once you're committed to the trade and once you allocate your 1%, you're in that trade. So you have your stop set, you have your target set, go to lunch, set alerts, okay? But that's not a reason for you to exit the trade. A lot of traders have that tendency. They, they get bored, they get literally bored in a trade and they kill the trade. They go, you know what? I'm down, let's say 100 bucks or 200 bucks. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stick around till the ultimate stop. And guess what happens? The moment they exit the trade, that is when the price action is gonna turn around and it's gonna go their way. So once you're committed to a trade, stay in that trade. Now, what happens after the doldrums? After the doldrums between two and four o'clock, this becomes the second most active session of the um of the day especially between three and four, that is when the volume increases. What do you think? Why do you think the volume increases? The bond market is closed, right? The bond market closes at three. Commodities close earlier as well. O oil, for example, CL closes at two o'clock, 2.30. Uh, gold, likewise, right? Gold is closing at one o'clock or 1.30. So all these traders that are not actively trading gold and oil, they're going back into the indices. Does that make sense, guys? That's why it's the, um, the first hour and the last hour is the heaviest in volume. But typically, if the market didn't go anywhere, for example, in the morning or at lunch, less likely that it's going to move into the end of the day, especially if the ne next day you have some news announcements, okay? Now, Asia, London, focus. All right, when I look at the markets and I was waiting for eight o'clock right now, eight or nine o'clock, I like to look at the um, market around after nine o'clock, 9 p.m. And I always look at the four hour and one hour for some overnight trades, okay? So what do I look for? I'm going to go here. Hold on. Oops. All right. And let's go here. Okay. This is a chart of NASDAQ. We could look at anything you guys want, but I want to go to the four hour. Okay. Let me just uh, eliminate. Oh, by the way, let's discuss the trade that we had today, right? On the five minutes. So you guys could see the trade that I took on the five minute, right? Okay. This is, a min this is our entry. And by the way, the market opened here. You can see the volatility. Look at the volatility, guys. This is the New York trading session overnight. And all of a sudden, boom, New York session, right? This is the first candle. This is the open. This is a very bullish candle. It actually triggered continuation. But there's this dark. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Can somebody tell me what kind of candle this is? The name of the candle. 
wake up, wake down, and a little body in the middle. I don't care if it's red or green. Can somebody tell me the name? Okay. All right. It's a doji. Exactly. So what does a doji mean? So if there's one thing that you learn from tonight's presentation. What are you guys, what are you guys going to learn? It's going to be bullish above and it's going to be bearish below. Up and down. Indecision. You got it. So it's going to be bullish above, bearish below, period. That's it. It's not complicated, is it? <laughs> okay. Now, if it's into the high, remember that if you have an asset that is into an uptrend, it's less likely that it's going to be very bearish. Okay. So I would not be shorting this. I would not be shorting this. Okay. Let me take this out. All right. So I'm not going to be shorting this, but typically that suggests in this example right here that you have a pullback. So a pullback is imminent, especially that you have this inside candle. So you see that you have an indecision candle and then a candle that is not confirming above or below. It's staying within, but it's staying within 50% and lower. So that means that you're going to, you're likely going to get a sell signal. But the question is, is it going to respect the 10 EMA because the traction has been off of the 10 EMA or is it going to pull around the 200 SMA? And notice one thing. So this is what the uh, the first indecision into the high. We knew it was going to get a pullback. We waited for the pullback to happen. And then we had doji, wicks, inside bar, and inside and out. And this is where we got in at 935. You saw my portfolio. This is where we got in at 935. It was a pullback buy off of the 20 simple moving average with a rotational pattern. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you something. 80% of the time, this pattern delivers results, okay? And this is our exit right here. So we waited until the price went up. It hit several of our targets, like three or four targets of ours. And over here, you can see that it was trading over 16,000. Now, we had a lot of patience and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And I've noticed that. And by the way, we had a trail stop of 980. And I said, you know what, if 980 is going to hold, this is going to go higher. It's most likely going to go into the uh, 1640 level. And in fact, Randy, I don't know if you're here. Randy said it's going to go to a 1640. He nailed it, right? All right. So bottom line is that this was our exit. We saw that the price action here on this red bar, as we were going into 11 o'clock, I noticed that the price action was kind of like, you could see here that it was coming in, right? So we had high, lower, high, lower, high right here in the candles, okay? So we said, you know what? Let's just close the trade at 90 and we're done. We just, you know, pretty much got one R right here and we're done because we placed our stop all the way below, below this uh, doji low because we didn't want to be taken out. Remember, if you're applying tight stops, you're expecting really a lot of stop outs plus very small prop, uh, very small profits. If you're applying wider stops, you're expecting wider profits and bigger profits. So this is our trade. Now, let's take these off, all right? And let's say we we have a blank canvas and because we're all, you know, less than an hour away from nine o'clock, let me show you what I'm doing. And I'm gonna prepare tomorrow's session with you guys here, okay? So we're going to do it tonight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the four hour chart. Okay. So I am going to squeeze the price a little bit in here and I'm going to try to see if I find some opportunities. But before that, I'm going to ask you guys real quick, what trend is this? Can somebody tell me in here, what trend is this? Is this an uptrend or is this a downtrend? Perfect. Exactly. This is an uptrend. Perfect. So what do we do in uptrends? We look for any kind of pullback activity to buy the dip. That's the normal thing to do because the institutional money is still to the upside. At the same time, we notice, we're noticing that we have all this noise here, right? So basically, this is a whole base, right? This is a whole base, isn't it? A whole base. So we have been sideways. Take a look at this since basically mid November. So we have been chopping around. We want some clarity, right? So if you want to put an overnight trade on, 
on the four hour, you really don't have a lot that is work that is going for you, especially NASDAQ. So for that reason, you're going to the daily. Okay. You're going to the daily. Obviously, okay, yes, you're doing your analysis. You can see here, yeah, this is October of 2023. We're trading into the highs right here. You can see that the price action came in like a magnet right into the 20 simple moving average. You're noticing here something really interesting. You see these tops right here that I have highlighted with green. You can see that if I am extending this resistance area, you could easily see that the price action is curling and coming back into prior resistance. This is called a minor support zone. Minor support zones are only present in up trends. So that's why there's no shorting here. Okay. No shorting here. If they start crossing below, if they literally start taking the these lows out, so 720, then the price action is likely to start moving lower. And oops, sorry about that. And most likely it's going to want to go. Oops, I don't know. All right, what did I do? Okay, here we go. All right, so it might it might want to go. Oh, why is that not moving? It might want to go here to test this 20, this uh, 50 SMA. The green line here is the 50 SMA that is coming like this, okay? So it may want to go from here to here, okay? So that would be like about 2% correction, okay? And it would have an estimate of about three to five days. Now, what happens, let me just take this out, okay? Let me take this out. So this is the bear side, okay? What happens to the bull side? I'm gonna zoom in because I need to see the candles, right? I need to see the candles. So basically this, this green candle right here represents today's activity. So what do you think it's gonna happen tomorrow? If today, because this is a commitment, uh, bar, right? It's green. It has a really nice, um, uh, it has a really nice, uh, um, um, uh, thickness to it. It's bold, right? It, there was a lot of buying here. So what, what I gather from here is that this is support into the 720. If you want to take, so again, day trades, it's out of the question. Okay. <laughs> day, day trade is not going to make sense and watch the price action tomorrow okay watch the price action tomorrow so remember it's going to be this is going to be uh bearish oops bearish below okay right here under this uh under this um 721 and if it takes out today's high today's new york trading session high we're gonna write it down it's gonna be bullish does that make sense, guys? Above. Why do you think that is? Because once we trade, once we have this candle here, let me see if I get a cursor. Because uh, they change Zoom and it's like, I don't know where these tools are popping up. Okay, here it is. Um, oh, I don't have the tool anymore here. Let's see. No, I'm just going to do it like this. Okay. So, see. oh, not this. What the heck? Okay, here it is. Found it. Okay, never mind. All right. So, here it is continuational patterns. Continuational patterns are patterns that are present on all time frames. And here's the thing once you have a candle, that is dominated more than 80%. And here we have more than 90%, right? Because look how thick it is, right? From the open to the close. If you have more than 80% green into the candle, and if the next candle that opens takes the high out, so you, we, we need to take this out right here, okay? We need to take that 16,066 out. And if we take it out, Guess what? 90% of the time, you're going to get a bullish move to the upside. Does that make sense, guys? How powerful is that? So this is a continuational pattern. Bullish candle, 
80% of the body green. And if we take out the high, 90%. So you have a trade with a batting average, not a batting average, but with a win ratio of 90%. And we're talking about 90% in trading. And you guys know that trading, like, wow, odds are slim. But this is what's happening. Please watch this tomorrow. Please watch this tomorrow. Bear side. You want to discuss the bear side? If we break below 700, I would give it about 20 points. We're going down. Okay? So if we break below this support, we're going down. And that's going to be a commitment down. Okay, to the 50 SMA. Why do you think the 50 SMA is going to have a high, such a high impact here? Do you guys know? Okay, well, let me share with you. You see this high right here? So there it's going to have two targets. One, it's going to be around the 468 and the second one into this 50, uh, into this 50 SMA right here. These are going to be the two targets. And this target, the 468, is going to come from this prior high. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Isn't trading easier when you look at it this way? Bullish above, bearish below. <laughs> and then tomorrow, if you break above or if you're trading it, let's say we're going to have a really flat overnight or we're going to dip just below 16,000. Remember that if the price action is going to start trading uh, in between this support resistance, the price action is going to be literally 50% odds. 50% odds is not good because you have 50% odds of stopping out, right? So remember that as long as the support is being defended, the 700 to 720, you can still go long if you have a technical pattern based on which you can go long, right? Look at the shapes and the sh uh, the shape and the color of the candles because this is going to speak volume. Okay. Now, one more thing. Okay, let's do let's do this and let's talk about. Ooh, how do I take those out? <laughs> okay, clear. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, cool. All right. So market timing. I'm going to tell you. You're gonna love this market timing. In fact, let's let's do let's do the market timing this way on charts. Forget about forget about slides, right? You guys see this? Uh, you guys see the screen? Okay. All right. Cool. So here's the thing, guys. Okay. Um. RTY, right? RTY. Let's go back and RTY. Let's go back in time. All right, and if you have something else that you would like, okay, here it is, where is it? Okay, I need to know, okay, that's 11, 11, 11. Let's go, why don't I do like, hold on a second. Okay, hold on just one second. I'm just, I'm just gonna get a bigger chart. It's easier that way. Okay, here we go, here we go. All right, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna put RTY, this is a five minute chart, let's zoom in. Okay, this is the open right here, okay? Look how choppy it was, how volatile it was, okay? And then we're gonna get into uh, how to select the winning trade for the day, okay? And this is gonna be, uh, we're, we're getting close to the finale, okay? <laughs> All right, so basically, when you're looking at RTY, you wanna determine which way is it going to go? I mean, seriously, which way is it going to go, right? And in the morning, it's very hard to assess because for the last week and a half and almost two weeks, the market has been divergent. And what do I mean by divergent? We had the Dow up, S&P down, Russell up, NASDAQ down. Most of the time and the best trades are happening when all the trades are in sync. Why am up? S&P up, NASDAQ up, Russell up. That is easy to trade. 
And that's, that should be our focus. Okay. So what I wanted to share with you, oops, that there are some phenomenons that are happening into the market. Hold on. Let me just zoom in. Where's the, okay, here it is. There are some things that are happening in the market every single freaking day. Have you guys heard of reversal times? Have you guys heard of reversal times? And you guys know that if the market opens at 930 and it chooses a direction into, for example, 945, 945 is the time when it's going to stall and it's going to create a pullback, right? Market opens, right? Market opens. This is the high of the New York trading session. This is the, the, this is the first candle, if you will. This is a five minute chart, by the way. So from 9.30 till 9.45, freaking textbook, hold back, okay? Those of you guys that are in the class, okay? You can see it again here in action. So from, from the open to 9.45, hold back. We know that 9.45 is one of the timings that provides beautiful rotations, right? Here it is, inside candle, right? Look at the candle before, inside candle. So when you see a big, large candle and then an inside candle, what is an inside candle? A candle that is trading within the high and the low. Here we had a little slingshot, doesn't really matter. A lot of volatility. It's basically the same support, so the same low, close to the same low. What this candle shows us is that it's like a spring. It's kind of gathering energy. Can somebody tell me by looking at the color of this candle, what kind of energy and directional bias this candle is choosing, selecting, bullish, exactly. So it's an inside candle and it's collecting bull energy right? It's collecting bull energy. What do you think it's going to happen if it takes out this high right here? What do you think it's going to happen if it takes out this high right here? Boing! <laughs> it's going to go up, okay? It's going to go up. And this was one of the crappiest today, by the way. It's going to go up, right? You're shooting for the prior high, and that is where your target should be. You're shooting for the prior high because the market opened and it just went higher before it pulled back and it created its own resistance here, okay, into these highs. And now when the price action is rotating, so again, this is your entry, right? 54, so we're 53 and a half. This is your stop just below this candle because you're playing this bull coil segment right? You're playing this candle. You're putting your stop over here. This also represents a pivot. So it's going to be significant. It's not only that it's a candle, right? And then you're going, bam, full throttle higher, okay? So at the time of the reversal, at the time of the reversal, obviously this is a two-hour candle, okay? This is a two-hour candle. You can either exit for example, your entry was 53 and a half. You exit at 63 and a half, for example. If you want to trail this and if two hours are, you know, let's say you, you, you want to say, hey, what if it's going to like 70? OK, let's say you have another target of 70. What you do is you reference, you go to the prior high and say, hey, this was resistance. This was actually my target. But the market gave me 63 and change or 64, okay? Gave me what? What is it? 63, 63.3. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay in the game, right? I'm going to stay in the game. And I'm going to trail this prior high. So this way, if it comes back and if it takes my high out, I'm out. But at the same time, I'm giving myself a chance because if the price comes slightly back, it doesn't tap into this high and it turns around, I'm going to get another run up, 
my, maybe into the 70s, maybe into the 80s, maybe into the 1900s, okay? So I want to show you something else here, okay? So this is the strategy. Now, you have the high. So this is from, th this segment is from, uh, from 9.30 till 9.45, from 9.45, price goes up to 10 o'clock. What do we know? That at 10 o'clock, there's a major reversal tide that is coming into the market. And here, if you get a shallow pullback, the move is going to continue into new highs. <gasps> Are you kidding me? If you get a shallow pullback without erasing the prior low, the price action is poised to continue higher. Where did we close? Where did we close? In the 70s. We were trading at 63. Okay, does that make sense? Now I want to show you something else on the daily here. Okay, and then we're going to go to how to select the best trade of the day. All right, do you guys see this candle? Okay, do you guys see this candle? Okay, we have a bottoming tail here. So what is a bottoming tail? A bottoming tail is a candle's action that shows us that the bulls are taking full control. The price action went down and zipped back up. You can see it here and closed into the highs. Do you guys know that in uh, 1998, 1999, going into year 2000, I had a friend that would buy every single day a stock or two stocks or three stocks and they would call their broker and say, I want to go along here. And they would buy the prior high above the prior high of the prior candle and they would call their broker because every, everything was going higher. It was so easy to make money then. But then it was very easy to lose all the money after year 2000 when we had the 2000, <laughs> 2000 bubble. So everybody that got complacent lost money. All right, so here's the thing. You guys see it? What do you think is going to happen over this high? Where do you think the price is going to go? Based on the example that I showed you before with NASDAQ, where do you think Russell is going to go tonight and tomorrow if we break above the high? By the way, the high here is 1870.9. So if it takes out 71, and it already did, it printed a 71 and a half. It's going higher. It's going higher. So it's going to target these highs right here. It's going to target these highs. Do you guys see some prior highs over here? Uh-huh, me too. Okay, right? So not only that we have these highs, but we have these highs. That's why the price action is taking a sweet time right here because it's targeting these highs into the 1900. At the beginning of the presentation, I was telling you guys that next week is going to be a doozy to trade. And why do you think it's going to be a doozy to trade? Because we have the contract rolls, the volume is going to shift into two contracts, into the current contract, December contract until Friday, and then um, into um, uh, also into the March contract. So we're going to have split volumes. We're not going to have all the volume in one contract to create that massive follow through. We can still have follow through, but okay, it's not massive follow through. It's not going to be easy to read. And then we have the quadruple which option expiration quadruple which option expiration is when they look the market makers pin the prices in etfs in futures indices in the queues and spies at around whole numbers why so most most of the options would expire worthless can you say worthless can you say worthless did you guys know that a futures contract is never going to expire worthless? <laughs> ever, ever, ever. All right. So now that we know, by the way, have you noticed where, uh, uh, have you noticed the following here in Russell, right? Russell is above the 10 EMA. It's above the 20 SMA. It's above the 200 SMA. And the moving averages are nicely fanning out. When the moving averages are fanning out, the price action gains traction. When the price is above the 10 exponential moving average, you should only think buy. You don't short. 
when the price action is above the 20 SMA, think buy because oftentimes you're getting, this is an ultra power trend. Ultra power trend. So remember, ultra power trend is the 10 EMA. Trending is the 20 SMA. When they get exhausted, when the price gets exhausted and gets extended, just like it did here, look at the distance between where the price is at here in the low of this candle and the 10 EMA. They waited for the market to cool off. What that means is they're waiting for the 10 EMA to catch up with price so it could push it back up. Does that make sense, everybody? And now we're going to go and I'm going to share with you how to pick the best trade of the day. All right. There are two things that you need to watch here very carefully. By the way, this chart, this window right here represents YM, Dow, uh, M&E Dow, m and s and es It represents NASDAQ, NASDAQ futures, right? And Russell, Russell futures, Russell 2000. I have oil here and I have gold here. We're going to talk only about indices, right? So what do we look for in indices? I'm not looking yet at the technical pattern. I'm not looking at the technical pattern. I could care less if it's an uptrend or downtrend, if it's sideways, I don't care. What I'm looking at, ladies and gentlemen, is the percentage. Is the percentage right here. Do you guys see my little arrow? The percentage. All right. So you're going to see that usually now it's the volume is way too thin. So there's not a way in which you can really accurately um, perform an analysis because you're not going to be day trading right now. Uh, but at the open tomorrow, look at the percentages because this is going to be telling. This is what has leadership or has lagged in the overnight, okay? So you're in a normal market environment, you're going to have a leader and a lagger. In a power trending market, you're going to have, again, leaders and laggards, laggards. Oftentimes in the overnight, or at times you're gonna have pretty much the same, very close to the same percentage through the um through the day and that's cool because throw a dart and you can trade whatever you want okay here's the thing look at the percentage let's look what's leading and look what's lagging after you do this remember i combine stock market knowledge with futures knowledge okay this is what I look at I'm going to display another screen you guys see the screen right now you see my cursor Okay, so here's what. I have a bunch of NASDAQ stocks over here. You guys see Apple dominance. I see I have the dominance into NASDAQ. NASDAQ is composed of 100 stocks. 100 stocks, say 100 stocks, 100 stocks. NASDAQ has 100 stocks under it. These are the big power players. Apple, Meta, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, Semiconductors, Pants, Google, Costco, Cisco, Adobe, Comcast, Intel, Qcom, Netflix, Starbucks, PayPal, AMD, Micron. This is what I'm watching. I have five other screens like this with, with exactly the Magnificent Seven and more. I have more screens like this, but I want to share with some information for you. At the open, or you could actually have this panel right here. You don't even need anything else because you're looking at power players. What are you gonna look? What are you gonna look for? Look at this candle right here. Okay, does that make sense, guys? <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So look at this candle. What did I tell you guys? And by the way, these are daily charts. Daily charts. Okay, these are not five minute charts. I don't care about five minute charts. We we do play one minute, two minute, five minute in the trading room. But what I look for is dominance. So what do I look for? Green bar. I want to make sure that close to the open, we top off this bar. And we if we top off this bar, then Meta is going to gain dominance. It's going to be bullish. I'm looking for, let's say, Microsoft to trade over, uh, over this highest bar, 374, 375. And if it does, NASDAQ is going to start screaming higher. I'm going to look for Apple to trade above. Look at today's candle. 
remember the biggest moves come from these really small candles. And if the price action is above today's candle high, it's going to skyrocket higher. Okay. So then if I see a lot of setups, these are called daily setups. If I see a lot of daily setups, I mean, take a look at Adobe guys. Oh my God. Dominance, right? And by the way, this is a bull sandwich. You can see that the bears are flanked and they're squeezing out. I'm sorry, the bulls are squeezing out the bears, right? Kind of like a peanut butter sandwich, right? This is the bread. <laughs> this is the peanut butter and jelly. The bears are the peanut butter and jelly and they're squeezing the bears out. So if tomorrow we break above this high, bam, we're going higher. Remember, these are daily charts. So you're getting your bias off of daily charts, okay? This morning, we identify semiconductors that are mo moving higher. And this is how you nail rotations, uh, in sector uh, sector rotations. Early on, the first five minutes, we pretty much have an idea what's going to rock and roll, okay? All right, so you're looking at this. You're looking at, uh, for example, at Tesla, right? Let's zoom into Tesla a little bit here, right? Zoom into Tesla. You see here, bottoming tail. So what does that show you? That today, the buy, so the price came back to the 20 SMA right here, and we had buyers coming in, lifting the price up. So what's going to happen tomorrow if we trade above today's high? It's going to have a rally, 253 or even more, Okay. So this is what I'm looking at. Now, uh, let me show you another screen here. And okay, one more. And that is NASDAQ, okay? Now, this is the Dow panel, okay? So tell me that Tell me that you could accurate, accurately trade while on the beach. Do you guys think that I would love to be at the beach and trade off? Maybe, maybe I should get one of those uh, courses from Instagram that I could day trade off of my phone. <laughs> okay. All right. So here's the Dow panel. Remember, you're looking at the Dow and you're looking at this panel. The biggest components of the Dow are UNH, United Healthcare, Goldman Sachs, Home Depot, Microsoft, CVX, JP Morgan, IBM, Caterpillar, Honeywell, Johnson, et cetera. You're looking for the same thing. If if we will break above and UNH above these highs over here, we're gonna have a massive rally, several couple of hundred points or several hundred points in, in the Dow. If you're getting the same rally in Boeing, by the way, look at the candle in Boeing. Is this buying pressure or what? Look at the buying pressure that came in, right? Look at 3M right here, ready to explode higher over 10350. It's gonna start. Moving towards 108, 10850. So these are the starting point of our, and this is actually the secret sauce to trading. This is one of the secrets. <laughs> we have numerous, numerous secrets. So tell me how much, how much guys are you enjoying tonight? Is this helpful? Is this super helpful? <laughs> Awesome. So has anybody like, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Has anybody showed you this trick? To now? <laughs> okay. Crazy, crazy pants. Okay. Crazy pants. Super hot, right? So again, remember, look at the percentages, look at the percentages. And if you have the real estate, okay, if you have the real estate, to have some extra monitors and to have these windows, look, it's priceless. It's, it's literally priceless. You could go get an extra monitor right now from, I don't know, a, a Costco. <laughs> from Costco. It's what, 200 bucks? Isn't it worth it watching it? <laughs> exactly. Isn't it cool, Dennis? Awesome. And Dennis took the course, by the way. Okay. All right. So would it be okay with you guys if I share what we're teaching in the course? Would it be okay if I share with you what we're teaching in the course a little bit? Okay. Uh, we're going to start a brand new, uh, brand new class. It's actually the last class of um, this year. And 
of December. And the next class, I think it's going to be in March. Okay, so you're going to have to wait a little bit until the next class. So the reason why I'm telling you this is because I want to work with all the traders. I devote a lot of time into trading rooms. So I put all my heart and soul into the trades and I don't have a lot of time for teaching live. But I, I think that the live teaching makes all the difference. Isn't it better for to have someone explain it to you versus reading a book and you don't even know if that author is a trader or not or if that is a successful trader or not have you seen their performance <laughs> have they called any trades <laughs> i know okay so we teach this institutional grade trading system why is it an institutional grade trading system now, here's the thing. When you're an institutional trader, and the uh, I, I, I'm not an institutional trader, by the way, but when you're an institutional trader, they coach you and they give you a big binder. I was lucky enough to see one of these binders and to look through it. Okay, I even made a copy of it. <laughs> okay. But I looked through the binder and the first chapter was risk management. They didn't start with candlesticks, with formations, with anything else, but it started with risk management. What do you think the first lesson was? How much money do you risk in a trade? I'm not kidding you. How much money you risk in a trade? Funds as well. We know what funds do when they take on a position because they cannot take like, for example, like I do, like when I trade three contracts, I take it, I don't know, I take, let's say S&P at 4588, because I can do that. But what if they have 800 or 8,000 contracts? Well, <laughs> they cannot do that, because that would like literally destabilize the market. So they have to buy in increments, right? They buy here, they buy there. So they layer out, they scale in, they scale, they scale in. And when they exit, they scale out because they cannot exit like 80,000 contracts all at once, right? Or 150,000 contracts at once. They have to scale, okay? So when they buy, they divide their position into 10 or 15 lots. Okay, that's what they do. So that's what they teach these traders. So they know that they're not allocating like 100% of their, let's say, so it would be like our 1% <laughs> divided into 10. So that's why I, right from the beginning, I understood the importance of sizing because this is what's going to make you or break you as a trader. Because if you have an account, think about this, you have an account, let's say you have, $10,000 in your account. If you're applying $2,500 risk on a trade, how long do you think you're going to have that account for? Not, not, not much, right? Not much. Especially if you're encountering a market like now. Yeah, probably a week. If you're encountering a market like now where, you know, you're sideways. So you don't have a huge, uh, not a feel, you don't have a huge bias. You only know that the market is in an uptrend and it's in a massive power trend. So you know that it's bullish. And the other thing is that you know that it's basing, right? You know that it's basing. And if it's basing into the highs, there are literally, let me just get a cursor here because I want to explain something else that is really important that you guys understand. Okay, let me see if I could take this. Okay, I'm going to try to draw it here. Okay, you have this motion, right? You have this type of movement. All right. What happens is that this is actually a stage one. This is called a stage one. This is a tentativeness stage. So that means that in this stage, okay, in this stage, you're waiting for a trade. This is, this is where you need to apply patience. So what do you guys do? For example, when the price action breaks above this range, what do we do? We think buy, right? So this inflection point right here, this is buy. Your stop is going to be here. So what we do here in a macro trend, this kind of like looks like this. 
you buy the lows, right? You sell the highs. You buy the lows, you sell the highs. And trust me, you're not going to nail the very bottom and you're not going to nail the very high. So it's basically the core of this trade, somewhere in the middle. And at some point in time, you're nearing what? You're going to get very close to this high. Doesn't this seem familiar? This is where we're at right now into the market. And by the way, this is a stage two. This is the accumulation stage. And this is the topping stage. This is stage three. Now, stage three is very similar to stage one. Okay, you guys get what I'm saying? And in stage three, what you do, because you're coming from an uptrend, you buy the bottoms, right? You buy the bottoms. Remember what I said that if NASDAQ gets below 700, uh, uh, 16, uh, um, 15,700, then that's going to be bearish, right? Okay, this is NASDAQ, for example, right here. If it takes this low down, guess what it's going to do? It's going to go lower. So it's going to go like this, lower. So what you do here, you short the tops and you cover at the bottom. Short the tops, cover at the bottom. You don't buy here. And this is the distribution phase. This is stage four. So depending on where you are into this uh, cycle, you know what strategies to adapt, okay? So at the beginning of the presentation, I was sharing with you guys that you memorize the pattern and you apply it in the market. And if it's not synced in, and if it's not clear for you, you don't take the trade. Does that make sense? Okay. So this is actually the tip of the iceberg, and it shows you a little bit of what we just probably 0.0001 of what we teach. I teach an institutional grade trading system because what I do is I teach exactly what I was mentored and what I was taught and what works in the market. And I do have my own proprietary system that I use as well outside of what I was taught. And in fact, the trigger times. And in fact, these trigger times, because I was mentored and I was sharing with my mentor because I was guided, I was doing this guided trading with my mentor who is an institutional trader that happened many years ago. We we're friends. He doesn't do this for a living. It was just a huge favor that he did for me, but I'm forever grateful. And I don't regret it one thing, even though it cost an arm and a leg, but it was fully worth it. And uh, it, it was a, probably equivalent to Harvard ed education, okay? So it was my Harvard degree in trading, if you will. All right. So basically, what, we, what you're going to be learning is stress-free zones. Stress-free zones, stress-free levels where you know exactly if you're going to be a buyer or a seller. You know how to apply risk management you're gonna learn high ads patterns and setups, how and where to place the stops, a read into trading psychology, because we provide you trading psychology as well. We're gonna go through that as well. So you're getting basically everything from A to Z to be a complete trader. We teach you technical analysis, candlesticks, stages, everything, money management, whatever it is, setup strategies, uh, everything. So one thing that we do that other educators lack is how to put everything together. Why? Because we're I'm, I'm a trader. That's what I do for a living. I trade for a living. So it's one thing when you buy a book on technical analysis, but then when your market is open, it's like, oh my gosh, how do I apply it? Okay. Uh, Isabel, what is your take on trading based on ticks, not time frames? Uh, ticks are very aggressive. You ticks are um, not many algos trade in ticks anymore. And uh, most of the individuals that base their trading on ticks and one minute throughout the day or two minutes throughout the day have a really poor batting average and they're blowing up accounts. And I'm not saying that 99% of the time, but 100% of the time. So you can, you have to review Stay away from the ticks. You want to have a risk-free time frame. Switch to a five or a 15 minute. I was forced by my mentor to watch paint dry in the market. And I was forced to trade for three months, the 15 minute chart and show the results. The results that you have by trading a tick chart are going to be very different than what you are 
uh, and that, then the ones that you're going to be trading from a 15 minute chart or a five minute chart with the tick chart, you're going to have tons of stop outs and you're going to trade and you're going to have so many commissions that are going to all overtake your wins. So even if you're going to make money in trading, you're going to give it back by uh, by uh, by paying these commissions. So you're not going to make money at the at the end of the month and at the end of the year, you're going to see that if you made $10,000 in wins in trading, you your commissions are going to be probably 20 to $25,000. They're going to be double. So careful there. Thanks so much for the question. So if you're ready to make six to figure, six to seven figure income, you need to take decisions and you need to be knowledgeable and you have to be ready for action. You need to follow a seven figure proven trader. And I'm not saying just follow me, just find it. Find someone that you're in sync with. Maybe you're in sync with somebody else. Maybe you like somebody else. Maybe, you know, a different trading style or whatever it is. For me, it really doesn't matter what trading style it is. For me, it's like, show me the money. I just want to make money. To me, it really didn't matter whether I'm trading stocks or futures or Forex or options or whatever it is. I just wanted to make money. And if I find someone that is willing to teach me to make money, you bet I'm going to go for the money. I don't care what I'm trading, okay? I don't care. Uh, the program is for uh, individuals that are losing money in the market, that don't have a proven system, that don't have a process that eliminates the noise, and that lack confidence. This course is literally going to change your life. We have thousands of traders that have taken the course and are successful trading. In our trading room, we have so many traders that, ha that have given up their jobs and they're full-time traders. You can talk to them. So ask yourself this. Am I a welfare trader? Not successful, spinning the wheels on different strategies, crazy you know, systems, algorithms, you name it, okay, indicators. These are these are the individuals that are eternal students, never committing because they always think that they don't know enough. You have to get to a point where you take a decision and say, hey, I'm going to learn this system. To me, it really, like I said, it really didn't matter what system it was. All I wanted is the result. I don't care if I trade stocks or futures or options or whatever it is, Forex. I want to make money, okay? So I kind of like molded myself to something that will make money. And you're going to love it, okay? Because once you make money and once you're successful, you freaking love it. you got to adapt the millionaire mindset in order to be a successful trader. So don't be stuck into the welfare trader. Trade small, trade little. If you don't have the money, you could go prop. OK, but don't trade with fear. A lot of traders trade in fear. OK, fear is horrible. And when you're trading with scared money, you're going to lose all your money. That's why I'm saying the most important thing is for you to risk wisely and position size. So invest in yourself to achieve the best results. I don't know about you guys, but when I wanted to become a trader, a day, especially a day trader, because I wanted something that can supplement my income because I didn't have an income anymore. I quit my job, remember? So I didn't have an income. So I wanted to have that income. I wanted that income to come into the house, right? Because swing trading and investing, they're fine, they're beautiful, they're awesome, they're compounding, they do this and that. But at the end of the day, at the end of the month, I cannot pull my money out and say, hey, I'm going to pay the bills, right? So our program literally boils down to $16.43 a day for a year. If you're committed, how, how many times do you spend, like let's say within 10 days, like $160 and you have no idea on which $160 uh, in 10 days, you have no idea where your $160 went to. You have no idea. It's like, what did I spend $160 on? But this is a skill that is gonna put you in the driver's seat. You're gonna be mentored. You're gonna be literally whipped with education, okay? So we have tons of testimonials from our traders. You can see it here. 
Uh, the class is very intensive and comprehensive. I attended the full 10 day, 10 day power course uh, and the training incubator and I'm blown away by what I have learned in such a short amount of time. I have a collection of training books and DVDs. I have attended many online courses and none came close to this. Now I can say that I finally have a system. You can learn from books, but they do not put all the information together for you. With Trade All Out, you learn all the pieces of the puzzle and how to put them together. And I'm telling you guys, like we have people all over and most of these um, traders that you guys see here, they're in the trading room. Uh, they, they're in the trading room. So 90% of our trading room members are students, okay? All right, so what are we gonna teach you? Okay, so what are we gonna teach you? We're gonna fast forward here, okay? Basically, the most powerful day trading chart patterns and literally how to exploit them for above average gains. I'm all for above average gains. Like I said, if you trade, and Isabel had a great question, how about the tick chart in comparison to the timing chart? If you go for small chart, for small time frames or for tick charts, you have small stops with tiny profits and multiple stop outs. If you go for timing, especially five and 15 minute, you're gonna go for wider stops, huge profits, okay? We teach you the six major disciplines of every trade, the entry to stop the target, train management, position sizing, and trailing. We teach you market tempo, right? Remember the market is up and then goes down and then up and then down. We teach you exactly the same, the timing. Remember how I showed you today at RTY from nine o'clock to 945, from 945 to 10 o'clock, from 10 o'clock to 1030, from 10 o'clock, from 1030 to 1115, <laughs> okay? So we teach you multiple timeframes and how that multiple time frame alignment works, how to maximize your timing using key moving averages and other super powerful indicators that are free with every broker. Like there are a couple of moving averages, that's it. It's the volume period. You're going to learn the psychology behind the candlestick so you don't waste your time with indicators and having clutter charts. And once you see a candle, you're going to be able to recognize it and say, oh, okay, I know what the course of action is. I know that if the price goes above, it's going to continue higher. I know that if the price is going to stay inside, it's going to pretty much stay neutral. And if it's going to stay below, it's going to enter a sell mode. Okay. How to maximize gains and minimize losses using proper money management techniques. Because management has a huge component, okay? Uh, market timing, precise market timing, when to buy and when to sell. Advanced technical analysis skills. Guys, you're never going to need another book. You're not, never going to need another webinar. You're never going to need another seminar. You're never going to need another course ever again. This is it, okay? So I put this together for you guys. This is the live Power Income Futures Trading course. It's $5,999. The price is going to go up. Next time we're going to meet, price is going to go up. This course starts Monday and it's for five days from two o'clock to about 4.30. Plus with this course for this month, you get three months trading room access. This is a professional trading program. So if you are serious and say, I want to become a professional trader, I want to become a full-time trader. This is it. Full-time trader, meaning like basically you're working an hour a day. <laughs> okay. Because I'm going to teach you how to trade the power hour. I already taught you tonight how to look at the market and how to nail what index you're going to be trading, right? Because if you're having power movements, daily setups in stocks, in NASDAQ stocks, you're going to be trading NASDAQ. <laughs> okay. All right, we're voted number one uh, best in the industry. In 2021, we won an award. We won the Global FinTech Award organized by Benzinga for best financial literacy tool, basically for best trading education and the results delivered. That's really powerful, okay? So what are you getting with this course? You're getting lifetime access to the Power and Confucius Trading course live. So that means that if you're taking the course now in December, you're going to have to, you're, you don't have to, but I highly advise you come back in March and retake the course. Free, free. 
we take you from zero to hero, from student to pro trader. Uh, you're getting the manual over 500 pages of education strategies, plans, and more. You're getting unlimited live retakes. So what that means is that you're coming every single time to take the course for free. Plus, you're getting all the recordings, guys. All the recordings. And every single month that we host the course, you're going to get another set of recordings. And we talk about markets within the cycle. And that's so important because we talk to you guys and we take you and we say, hey, this is the environment now. This is how this applies, right? So you get different stages of the course in different market environments and you see how they work 100% of the time. You get three months access in the trading room where I literally hold your hand through all the trades. I teach you how to trade, but I, so it's like, I teach you how to fish, but I fish for you and I cook the fish. I serve it. I spoon feed you the fish and then I wash the dishes. Okay. So it's basically, I walk you through all the trades with the entries, with the stops. I manage them live on the mic for you because I'm doing it for myself. You get access to a private Twitter feed. So for example, right now, if there's or election night or if there is any other event and if there is something happening, I have a way of communicating with my traders. They're not left hanging and say, oh, we only meet like a couple hours a day and that's it. No, we also meet and we, um, we have this private Twitter feed where I can announce different events that are happening in the market. We have, a, well, we provide you with a platform layout because a big component of being a successful trader is to have a really amazing platform layout. I'm sorry, I cannot take credit for my platform layout. I wish I could have said, oh my gosh, you know, I have the best platform layout. No, I took the platform layout from, from my mentor, okay? So I'm giving you the possibility to have that insight and not toggle through charts because if you toggle through charts, you're missing the moves. You're getting access to a Discord room. So for example, if you have a question, if you wanna ask another student the question, you're free to do that. We have two Discord rooms, one for the trading room and one for the class in case you guys have questions, okay? Nobody really has questions because we talk a lot in the trading rooms so or we're kind of like talked out. And uh, you have student personal support. Now, who does that? If you have a question, Shoot me an email if you and I get to you right away. I mean, people can, here in the room that are in the program can can literally attest to this. I explain it. Sometimes I get back with videos. Sometimes I get back with the call and say, hey, we need to meet or let's get together or I want to show you this or I'm answering via email. And you also get a risk sheet, which is literally mind blowing. This is the risk sheet. This is a performance tracker where you're gonna see all the trades that we have with the entries, the stops, where the long or short, by the way, look, long, 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 long. Guys, we have been long. Have we shorted? Well, maybe once or twice. Here's a short, okay? And it worked. Uh, short here, again, and it worked. But the majority of trades are longs, right? Are longs, very few shorts. Why? Because we're in a bull market. Now, the risk management is so important because I provide you with the risk calculator. Remember when I was telling you guys that you have to risk 1% per trade? Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. So here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing. You guys are going to have access to this calculator. Okay, right here. And when I say that, let's say somebody has $50,000 account whether it's prop or old or whatever it is. <clears throat> you have the option to select and say, hey, I'm going to be risking 0.5%, 1%, or 2% of the account, okay? So it's your choice. At the end of the day, it's your choice whether you want to risk 1% or 2%, okay? Let's say you want to risk 2%. So that's $1,000. So let's say you're looking, for example, at NASDAQ, okay? And we're looking, let's say, on a five-minute chart right now. See how super simple everything becomes when you get all the information. So let's say you want to buy, you want to buy NASDAQ when it's trading at 
16,014, and you want to place the stop at 16,000 because that's support, right? So you basically have a 14 point stop. You go back here into your calculator, you go on this column, you go into 14, and obviously you, you go 10, 12, 15. So you're going to use 15 points. You go to NASDAQ and automatically you know that you're going to take the trade with three contracts. Isn't this mind blowing? Now, by the way, I have a template on my desk. I don't go into calculators and do this. I highly recommend like you go, you print it and you're done. Okay. And you have it on your desk. It's part of your trading plan. It's part of your trading plan that should be on your desk. I have my template for 20 years on a desk. I have been having these with different sizes. Okay. So this is what you're going to be getting. So that's how important this risk sheet is. This is literally like worth the value in literally the weight in gold, okay? So this is literally the only place, it's not me saying this, it's the traders that I have in the trading room, the traders in the class that say, this is the only place where you're gonna learn how to trade like a professional and you're gonna earn at the same time. And you're gonna do this live every day in the trading room. You're with me. It's 100% guided trading, okay? And if you want to start your journey today, our course is starting on Monday. So don't delay because I'm not going to take a lot of students because we don't take a lot of students. We usually take between seven and 10 students every single time, okay? And we just have about two or three spots left. That's it. Serious. I don't want to put you on a wait list until March, okay? And in March, you're going to pay a much higher price. So even if you want to take the course live in March, you could actually sign up and then take the live course in March. I'm going to be sending you the recordings from this December course. So when you think about it, it's $16 a day for a year, 365 days in a year, $16 a day. In 10 days, 160 bucks. Like we go grocery shopping, we spend two to $300. We don't even know what we have in our cart. And when you look at it, it's like, oh my gosh, I need to get a steak. <laughs> like all I got is like potatoes, bananas, and uh, cucumbers, and a gallon of milk. And then, oh my gosh, that's it. Think about this. So if you're ready to commit, you could go to our website. Uh, it's tradeallot.com. You could actually go here. And here it is. This is our website. And you go under education. You go fut under futures. Oops. You go futures day trading. Okay, here is going to say that you have 30 day access to the training room. We're actually offering you a bonus and you are getting three months with us. That's another thousand dollars bonus. Okay, and if you're ready, you can learn a lot of the things here that uh, that we teach. First of all, you're going to get introduction to the futures market. We give you introduction to futures market participants. Here we talk about algorithmic trading. We talk about hedge funds. We talk about portfolio managers, contracts, contract size, rollover, what happens into the rollover expiration. So you have every single detail. There's not one detail that is left behind. You're actually going to get this course when you enroll. We're going to send you the next day. We're going to send you the video introduction to the futures market. So when we start the course, we actually started with, we started with charting. We talked about the candlestick language. So if you enjoyed the candlestick language that we talked about today, oh my God, you're going to love it. Patterns and pivots, candlestick formations and how they come about. We're going to talk about charting tools and indicators. The six months have indicators on your technical chart. We're going to talk about uh, market cycles. I just give you gave you a brief example of the cycles. Optimum timing, when to buy, when to short. Optimum timing, when to exit long positions or short positions. Optimum timing for holding on to positions. So when do you know when to hang on to your trade? How do you know how to trail a trade? A lot of times traders are taking profits way too soon. We don't. We want to stick around in case the market delivers more because we want to juice that trade. Uh, market trends, uptrends, downtrends, and how to trade these different trends, sideways trends, and when and how to, uh, to trade each trend of the market. We're talking about timeframes, 
Did you guys know that there are three times of time frames? There are executional time frames, analytical time frames, and there are multi time frame fusion that are going to help you. And they're easy. They're easy to remember. Technical analysis basically, you're going to learn everything under the sun. You're not going to need another book. Everything is organized for you here with examples. You're going to get the market tempo. Right. This is proprietary for trade out loud. You get trigger times again, proprietary for trade out loud. Remember when we talked about nine o'clock to nine forty five, nine forty five to ten o'clock, ten o'clock to ten thirty, ten thirty to eleven to eleven fifteen. Bam. And then you're having the doldrums. So you know what kind of strategy you're going to implement within these tempos. So you don't waste your time and your money. You know exactly what to do. You get reactionary market phases. You get the anatomy of the trade, how to calculate entries with laser sharp precision, regardless of what time frame you need to uh, you want to trade. Calculating stop areas, calculating targets, calculating risk. So important, right? Then we teach ten proprietary trading strategies. We teach you trading patterns. Oh, this is cool. Trading methods or trailing methods, I should say. So we teach three trailing methods because when you're in a trade, you don't want to think. Trading is not about thinking. Trading is execution. You see it, you execute it. No thinking. If you start thinking in trading, then you're doing it wrong. In trading, you see it, your light bulb comes out, boom, you hit the button. We teach you money management these are all bonuses, guys, right here, by the way, right here. These are all bonuses, money management. We teach you trading journaling, how to journal the trades. We teach you trading psychology. We teach you, uh, we, we actually provide you a trading action plan that if you see it, you're going to literally flip because it walks you through the market. It's a complete trading plan and what you need to do before the market opens until after the market closes every single step from five seconds to five seconds, what you need to do. Uh, it's sort of like a manual that's gonna walk you through every single trading day. And then we're gonna teach you how to put everything together. And best of all, I haven't even shared with you guys, we don't have time tonight, but I'm gonna teach you how to trace institutional levels on your trading chart so you know where the bullish above and the bearish below is, and you know where the targets are. And you are going to do that on all your charts, whether you're day trading, swing trading, whether you're trading stocks or futures or options. And we provide you, like I said, with the platform layout. So much more than this is into the manual. So if you're interested, it's $5,999. If you want to take it a step further, we have an additional five-day hands-on course experience. This is another five-day. This actually starts in January. But if you want to opt for this, this whole entire class, so it includes the Power Income Futures Trading course, plus it has the trading incubator. And this whole thing is almost $9,000 and it it's for everything. So if you're very new to trading, I highly recommend this because this is where I'm going to get with you and talk about computer requirements, how to set up your platform, how to install platforms, platform features, order types, placing orders. So we're going to play a, a lot. Plus we have... Uh, we have four classes that are super highly advanced. We're going to teach you damage control so you don't sweat in trades just in case. For, for example, your platform shuts down and you for not that you forgot, but perhaps you omitted on placing the stop or you didn't have time to place the stop. Let's say you didn't have time to place the stop in your platform quick. And then when your computer comes back on or your electricity comes back on or whatever happened, you go like, oh, holy moly, what happened? So I'm going to take that holy moly and say, oh, okay, I'm going to do this now. So we're going to teach you damage control. Okay. So you're in control all the time. Okay. All right. So um, we're going to teach you how to scale into trades. We're going to teach you how to profit stack in pyramid trading. This is super cool. This is done only in trending environments. Then we're going to teach you intelligent stops. These are different kinds of stops than hard stops. 
Uh, we're going to teach you volatility and best of all, the 10 o'clock golden rule, which is phenomenal, which is going to help you with the damage control. It's super, super cool. All right. So this is it for tonight, guys. So if you guys are interested, hound here. I'm going to post the link in the trading room right now. So if you're interested or if you want to talk to me or if you want to shoot me an email, uh, if you have questions about the course, more than happy to assist you with that. So I know it has been more than two hours and 20 minutes and has been a long one, but I hope it was worth it. Okay. So thanks so much, everybody. This is all for tonight. I so appreciate you guys. I really hope that I will get to work with you starting with Monday. You're automatically going to be included in the trading room starting with Monday. So remember the enrollment is going to close on Saturday and this uh, webinar is going to uh, uh, be available for you. It's going to be sent out tomorrow and it's going to be available only until Sunday. So if you want to take notes, make sure that you watch it through the weekend and don't delay register for the course because it's not going to have the same price and it's going to be uh, all the way in March. Okay. It's not going to have the three month trading room. And it's not going to have all the bells and whistles like this time. So thanks so much, everybody. And uh, I will see you guys in the course on Monday. Happy trading, everybody.